By the time The Origin of Species had published, dinosaurs had finally been recognised as a separate species of fearfully great lizards, which is what the dinosaur name means. The fossil record in rocks also showed that they all appeared to have died out abruptly, completely wiped from the record, seemingly replaced by mammals, reptiles and birds. It was already known that dinosaurs and birds shared some common features. They both laid eggs, some had similar claws, some dinosaurs were found with hollow bones, just like birds. Paleontologists and biologists of the day theorised that if evolution is true, at some point in the fossil record there must be a transitional form showing a half dinosaur, half bird. They didn't have to wait long to be proven correct. Just two years after the publication of On the Origin of Species, this strange fossil was discovered in 1861 but it was missing most of its head and neck. It was described in 1863 by Richard Owen as having a long lizard-like tail, bearing a pair of feathers on each joint, and with its wings furnished with two free claws. Another specimen was discovered in 1875 and was later purchased by the Berlin Natural History Museum. This is the most famous complete specimen and the first one that was discovered with a complete head. Feathered wings are easily clear to see, as is this long feathered bony tail, which modern birds do not have. Birds today have a small tailbone. This is a peregrine falcon. Another 10 specimens of Archaeopteryx were found, making 12 in total. They were all found at the same point in the fossil record, approximately 150 million years ago, at a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth and before even more bird-like fossils were found higher up in the fossil record. What else then can this be if it is not something in transition between a dinosaur and a bird? But there was still the issue that at the time Archaeopteryx was discovered, there were no good specimens of small advanced dinosaurs. All of the dinosaur fossils from that time were very large. Towards the end of the 20th century though, much smaller dinosaurs were being discovered and they showed that, except for the relative length of the forelimb, there is very little difference between primitive birds like Archaeopteryx and advanced theropods, which is a group of carnivorous dinosaurs like this Dromaeosaur Velociraptor, which as we can clearly see here, also had feathers on its limbs. Feathers weren't the end of the similarities though, because the Velociraptors also had wishbones, breast bones, wrists that contain a crescent-shaped bone, and hands like most other advanced theropods. We can clearly still see the same three fingers on its limbs, and the middle one is the longest. This is clearly a feathered dinosaur with a bunch of avian traits that we still see today. But doesn't that mean that Archaeopteryx could just have been another feathered dinosaur? Well, that topic has been hotly debated for over 100 years. And currently, today Archaeopteryx is actually not thought to be the ancestor of modern birds. Modern birds and Archaeopteryx are now thought to have evolved from the same ancestor, but not all species make it. Some are evolutionary dead ends. If we compare the skulls of Archaeopteryx and a modern chicken, we can see similarities, but with one major difference. Archaeopteryx has teeth and chickens, as well as all other modern birds, have beaks. Surely if evolution is correct, then the fossil record must also include birds with more bird-like features and less dinosaur-like features. That too just seems logical. Here is Enantiornithes, which was discovered recently in China. It still had teeth, but that is much more like a beak shape. It also now had a very short tail, and also the bones in the hands are now fused, far more like a modern bird than Archaeopteryx. In fact, this is much more bird and less dinosaur. Two years ago, scientists pieced together this skull fossil of a transitional bird called Ichthyornis dispar. This extraordinary new specimen showed similar brain proportions to modern birds, while other parts of the skull still more closely resembled those of predatory dinosaurs. This toothed bird lived in North America around 86 million years ago, and this one is closely related to modern birds. This bird story doesn't end here though. More bird fossils for a species called Confuciosaurus appeared even earlier in the fossil record, around 125 million years ago. What was strange here was they had toothless beaks, though we can still see the same three finger bones, just like dinosaurs. And unlike modern birds, which have fused those three fingers into a single bone in the hand, we can see these amazing long tail feathers very clearly. 
and the fact that this earlier bird had no teeth is proof that evolution can converge. That is, similar features can evolve independently in species in different periods of time. It's important to realise that evolution is not a straight line from one species to another. It's a constant branching and some species continue to evolve while others go extinct. Now you might wonder why all modern birds don't have teeth, perhaps thinking that teeth should be a huge evolutionary advantage. That does seem logical, but teeth are also quite heavy and flight is already a very energetic activity without carrying any extra weight around. And it's clear that birds don't actually need teeth. Even birds of prey, which can easily cut open larger animals with their beaks. It is also clear that we can see that birds didn't just suddenly evolve from a T-Rex overnight, but rather the classic features of birds evolved one by one. First of all, bipedal locomotion, then feathers, then a wishbone, then more complex feathers that look like quill pen feathers, then wings. And the end result is a relatively seamless transition between dinosaurs and birds. So much so that you cannot draw an easy line between these two groups. And for those of you who thought that the dinosaurs disappeared completely when that huge asteroid wiped out most life on Earth, not quite. Dinosaurs are in fact now referred to in two branches, avian dinosaurs and non-avian dinosaurs. 